This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Directors, our Father, in the name of Jesus, as we open thy word to study today, may thy will be done, and we'll give thee the praise. Save souls, bless Christians, in Christ's name he's worthy. Amen. On the last broadcast, I read a few lines from a booklet that I have written by a doctor of theology, that is, a doctor of religion, theology, whatever you want to say. And in this booklet, I read, I'm reading again, these words. There, The church must pass through the tribulation because tribulation signs are for the church. The church must pass through the tribulation because tribulation signs are for the church. Now, I don't believe that. I just read it. I don't want you to misunderstand me. That's not what I believe. I don't believe that. Now then, I'm reading again. Now, let us specifically mention some of the signs that will only transpire during the tribulation, which point to the impending second return of the Lord. The revelation of the Antichrist is a sign. Now, that's number one. The number one sign, the number one sign that Jesus is coming in the rapture to the post-trib people, those who believe in a post-trib rapture, sign number one is the appearing of the Antichrist. I want to read to you some words in the book of Daniel chapter 8. In Daniel chapter 8, Daniel saw this Antichrist. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding, dark sentences shall stand up. Now all, I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm just a, I mean a country preacher. That's all. Just a country preacher. That's all. I'm not a scholar. No. But the scholars all agree that the scripture that I'm reading does, does, presents to us the picture, the word picture, or what Daniel saw when he saw the man of sin, the Antichrist, and I'm reading it to you. In the latter time, now that's the end of the age, in the latter time, he'll be a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences will stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Now, that's not the church, beloved, because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. This this statement concerns Daniel's people. Ah, bless your heart. If you tell me that the Antichrist will destroy the church, then bless your heart, beloved. Jesus was mistaken when he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And that's what Jesus said. In Matthew 16. Now he'll destroy the mighty and the holy people, the the Antichrist, and though his, through his policy rather, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princesses, that's Jesus, but he shall be broken without hand. Now that's God breaking him. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Now, God told Daniel to close up the vision. And in other words, seal it up because it's a long time before this will occur. Many days. And it has been many days because Daniel pinned these words down sometime about 550 B.C. So we would say it's been in uh, about 2,500 years uh, since Daniel penned the words. Now, when Daniel saw the Antichrist, the one that will destroy the mighty and the holy people, Israel, not the church, beloved, not the church, because I'll tell you, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. No, sir, never. Now, when Daniel saw the Antichrist, 
Here's what we read. And I, Daniel, fainted. When Daniel saw him, he fainted. Do you think you can stand more than Daniel? Now, if he's going to appear to the church, are you, are you, do you have more ability to face him than Daniel? When Daniel saw him, he fainted and he not only fainted, uh, he was sick certain days after I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished. I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Now, there is a picture, a word picture, a description. The Holy Spirit gives to us the word picture, the description of the Antichrist that you and I will face according to the post-trib rapturist. That is, if Jesus comes in our lifetime. Now, if we die... That's another story. Of course, those who die in the Lord, the spirit goes on to be with Jesus and the body will be raised in the rapture when the rapture occurs. But if you should be living uh, when the rapture occurs, that is according to the post-trib, I believe, you will face this person that I've just read about. I read in Daniel 8, 23 through 27. Daniel 8, 23 through 27. Now, I'm reading again from this booklet and I read, the, the revelation of the Antichrist is a sign. A sign that the rapture will occur soon. Now, I say, if Daniel saw the Antichrist and fainted, if Daniel saw the Antichrist and it made him sick, and he was sick for several days, I thank God I'm not going to see him. I'm glad I'm not going to see the Antichrist. Beloved, I cannot for the life of me. I've, I've thought it through. I didn't, I didn't want to listen. I had a thousand times rather be preaching on John 316 today. I had a thousand times rather be preaching on Acts 1631 today. You don't know my heart. God knows my heart. This is not a joy. I don't enjoy preaching these kind of sermons. This is not my kind of preaching, but I've had so many letters, so many requests, so many people disturbed. I felt it was my duty as the speaker on the gospel hour to give you the word of God. And if you believe the word of God, you won't worry anymore. And if you don't believe the word of God, I can't help you. Neither can anyone else help you if you don't believe the word of God. Now, Daniel further, I'm reading from the booklet. Daniel further reveals that for three and one half years... The church shall be overcome by the Antichrist. I'm reading verbatim. I'm not putting in a word. I'm not taking out a word. I'm not putting in a comma. I'm not taking out a comma. I'm reading verbatim. Daniel further reveals that for three and a half, one half years, the church shall be overcome by the Antichrist. Then, if that is true, Jesus was mistaken when he said in Matthew 16, 18, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Signs, signs, the revelation of the Antichrist, signs that the rapture will occur. Listen, the rapture will occur before the appearing of the Antichrist. The church will not see the Antichrist. The church is looking for the Lord Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. Now, here's another sign that the church will see. Now, listen. Signs, sights in the heaven are another sign given to the church, whereby they shall know Christ is shortly coming. Sights in the heavens are given another sign given to the church whereby they shall know Christ is shortly coming. I don't believe that. I read that from a book. I don't believe that. I believe what the Bible teaches clearly, that the church will be taken out before these terrible things. Now, I'm not going to read all of these, every one of them. Every one of them describes darkness, gloom, despair, bloodshed, and uh, the heavens shaken, the stars falling. But I'm going to give you this. Now, this is one of the signs that the post-trib theory teaches will 
declare, this sign will announce that the rapture is coming soon. This sign is a sign to the church according to post-trib rapture theory. Here it is. Now, the heavens departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair, the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree cast on untimely figs when shaken by a mighty wind. Now that, that's Revelation 6, 12, and 13. Now I'm reading from the book. I don't believe what I'm reading. I'm reading. I want you, I don't want you to, I don't want you to think I'm teaching this. I'm just showing you, beloved. Listen. I'm reading. You see how all these passages describe the same events which scripture, when scripture is compared with scripture. By divine inspiration, after describing these sites, John timely sets forth in the very next verse, the coming of the Lord. Now here's the rapture. Now I'm reading, I'm reading. And the heaven departed as a scroll is rolled together. Now that's Revelation 6.14. For sure, this is the coming of the Lord. All we need do is to read the next few verses, which set forth the fact that the wicked men of the earth see Christ as a result of heaven's departing as a scroll, and they cry for the rocks and mountains to fall on them and hide them from the face of the one that sits upon the throne and from the wrath. For the concluding verse Reads now. I wish I wish we had the rest of those verses in there. Uh, you know, kings, mighty men, great men, bondmen, free men, all men, all men hid themselves in the dens, rocks, the mountains. Well, I think I'll just read it to you because I don't see any point in leaving out scripture so very, very important. Now, the pamphlet that I'm reading from gives us just the last verse, which of course uh, definitely declares that the church will not be here. But I, I'm going to read this. Now here is the uh, part he, the, the pamphlet gives us these words. Now, and the heaven departed as a scroll and rolled together, and there are three periods and quotation marks. That means that that's not all the verse. Now I'm going to give you all of it. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and every island were moved. Now the church is going to see all the mountains and islands rolling and tumbling. Now listen. I don't believe that. I, I'm telling you what the post-rab, te- uh, post, uh, post-trib rapture, uh, teaches. Now listen carefully. And the kings of the earth and great men, rich men and chief captains and, and mighty men and every bondman and every free man, every free man. Now it doesn't say everybody except the church. It doesn't say everybody except the saved. It doesn't say everybody except the saints. It says every free man. I want to read it one more time. Kings, great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Now here's the rapture. Here's the rapture. It says right here, the very next verse, the concluding verse of Revelation says, and here it is according to post-trib. Here's the rapture. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now, that doesn't have anything to do with the rapture. That is the tribulation, my friend. Wrath, wrath, wrath. We are kept from the wrath. We are saved from the wrath. We are not appointed to wrath. That's all scripture. We will be kept from the hour of temptation, the hour of wrath, because we are children of God. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to close this series. I'm not going to use any more time. I've, I've delivered the day's 29 sermons. I'm going to deliver one tomorrow, and that's it. I'm not going to talk anymore. If I haven't uh, given to you enough scripture to convince you, then I, if I preach 30 more, I'm sure you wouldn't be convinced. Now, listen, I'm going to listen now here. In the last two lessons, this, I'm reading from this booklet. In the last two lessons, which are the final ones in our current series, will the church go through the tribulation? We're going to attempt to deal with passages which the pre-tribulationists used to attempt to prove that the church will not go through the tribulation. Now, we are also going to answer the questions 
which some of our radio listeners have sent to us since we have been dealing with this subject. Also, we're going to answer other possible objections. Before we answer these questions and objections, let me give you, let me give this further word concerning why we object, why we object to the pre-tribulation rapture theory. Now here is why this particular teacher and the post-trib rapturist reject pre-trib. Here it is. First, it is strictly unbiblical. Now, they say that the rapture before the tribulation is unbiblical, but I don't have any scripture there. There's no scripture there at all. Second, it is based on uh, guesswork. No scripture, not a, not a word of scripture. Third, it is an improper incentive for Christian living. Now, they say that uh, we ought to, uh, ought to live for Christ uh, because uh, to glorify God. Uh, we should live or do all things always for the glory of God. The proper incentive for Christian living is always for the glory of God. Well, now let's see what we have here in 1 John. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. John says, abide in Jesus and be very careful. Abide, abide, abide. Be careful. Uh, don't be uh, drifting around and fooling around. Be sure and abide so you'll not be ashamed when he comes uh, to get his saints, see, Yes, it does. The, the rapture, preaching the rapture, it may occur any second of any minute, of any hour, of any day. It may occur before I finish this message today. And that should, and it does, lead born-again people to be careful how they live. Fourth, it is a false motive for evangelism. Fifth, it makes Christ coming a secret and silent. Sixth, it divides the rapture and revelation by seven years alien to the word of God. Seventh, it separates the day of Christ and the day of the Lord by seven years. Eighth, it makes the time between the first and second resurrections a thousand and seven years ridiculous. Now, there's not a verse of scripture there, not one. I have eight reasons why you should not believe in the rapture before the tribulation, but I don't have a verse of scripture. I got eight reasons, no scripture. I'm going to give you one reason I'll give you one reason why the church will not go through the tribulation. In Revelation chapter 3 and in verse 10, Jesus, speaking through the Holy Spirit to John the Beloved, said, because you have kept the word of my patience, you've lived right, you didn't deny the word, you kept the word, you lived in the word, you rejected error, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now that's Revelation 3.10. And I'm going to turn. I didn't intend to do this. But I'm going to give you one more reason. And I'll have to hurry because my time's gone. I didn't have it marked. I didn't intend to use it. But I'm going to give it to you now. We find in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 9. Now, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 gives us that beautiful, beautiful account of the rapture. Now, in uh, chapter 5, verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. For God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation from hell, salvation from the tribulation, salvation from all that hell could heap upon us. If you are a born-again child of God, you are a member of the body of Christ, the New Testament church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. If you're born again, don't worry about the tribulation. Look for Jesus. Lift up your head Praise God, he's coming soon. If you're not saved, be saved now. Call on Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, for Jesus' sake, through the blood of his cross, the shed blood of the Lamb of God, I pray, I beg, I beseech thee, O God, save many precious souls. For Jesus' sake, he's worthy, and it is in his name and for his sake, his honor and his glory that I preach and pray. Amen.